Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. I'm going to do another art journal page today while I am sheltering at home and staying away from people. On the last video I did a mermaid page and I used a piece of the page. This is out of a coloring book and this is what was left over that I saved for something else. Um, this particular image, it's out of a coloring book, but what I didn't understand when I first got the coloring book is why she has roses in her hair, because it's kind of odd to have a mermaid on a bed of roses, so that, that kind of just seems strange to me. So what I want to do with it is repurpose it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this down to my page, and then I am going to... Um, put some clear gesso over it and allow that to dry and then I'm going to color the image with Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 crayons and acrylic paint and then I'm going to add some more to it such as roses and things from napkins and tissue paper and make a background in some words over here so if you want to stick around and watch me play that's what I'm going to do with this image so coloring book images you could color this as it is before you apply it to your page like I showed in the last video you could um, just color this and then Mod Podge it down I'm kind of going at a different approach because I am going to change it up a little bit so I'm going to color it right directly on the page so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just tear this image out around it and take that background out I'm going to leave her hands even though they have um, fish scales on them I'm going to paint them solid in um, a face color so that they won't look like mermaid hands any longer. They'll be flesh colored. So I'm just tearing it out so that I can apply it down on this page right here. So I'm just applying a nice coat of Mod Podge to the page. Kind of got a little too much. I tend to do that sometimes. Make sure it's pretty even. And I'm going to put this in place where I want it. And then I'm just going to use my hand to really smooth it out. Oops, I slid it. There you go. So that it doesn't get any wrinkles. And I had another rose piece and so I'm just going to add that somewhere here along this edge. I'm going to collage over this so that can just go there. Not to waste that rose. Okay, now I'm going to let her dry. Okay, this is dry and now I'm going to take some clear gesso and I'm going to put a thin layer of clear gesso over the top. And this will just give something for my paints to adhere to and grab onto because Mod Podge is smooth even if it's matte finish Mod Podge it's still smooth and I didn't want to use white gesso obviously because that would cover this up so clear gesso is the way to go because it's clear doesn't hide the image but it gives you that tooth for your mediums to grab onto so I'm going to let that dry now on the part right here that has fish scales and I want to make that into regular arms without fish scales where it's going to go back to being just flesh tone. I'm going to take a small brush and some white gesso and I'm going to use the white gesso to cover up those fish scales. Then when I put my acrylic paint over that those scales shouldn't show through. Okay so now what I'm going to do is take some acrylic paint. This is in a flesh tone color. I'm using a Joe Sonia paint um, but if you don't have Joe Sonia, it doesn't have to be an expensive acrylic paint. It can be just um, toll paints or any kind of craft paints in a flesh tone color. Or you can use other colors to mix and make your own flesh tone paint. Use whatever you have. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just start laying down a base, a simple base of flesh tone all over her body and face 
And then I'm going to come back with my Neo Colors, my Caran d'Ache Neo t Color 2. And that's when I'm going to do my shading and my highlights and really make it pop and come to life. So that's what I'm going to do is fill this in on her face, body, and arms with flesh tone paint. Now comes my favorite part and that is doing the shading. I have another video on Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 shading a face. I'll put that link in the description box below so it'll tell you colors I like to use and give you this basic process and show you step by step. But for this I'm just going to show you that um, to remind you that you need a light source. So from for this picture I want my light to be here. So it's like the sun is shining right here this side of her face is going to be lighter. This side of her face is going to be cast in shadow. Her shoulder, which is high, higher than her face, the sun would be shining on it, so it would be lighter there, darker under here, darker back here, lighter on the top of her arm. So make sure you know where your light source is. So now what I'm going to do is just pick up some Caran d'Ache Neocolor 2 crayons with my water brush. You guys have probably seen me do this a bazillion times. And start laying down color and start doing some shading and shadowing and filling this in. And that to me is the very most fun part is watching that face take shape and come to life. And even though this is the side that is in the light source I'm still adding color to the top because you want dimension too so you want it to look shaped and round and not flat so even though it's in the Sun you need some extra tones in there some extra colors so that's what I'm doing there and then on this side of course it's going to be heavier and darker where her face is tipped away from that light source her nose would be hiding this side of her face so this whole side is going to be darker and I'm just putting down some flesh tone and now using the acrylic paint as a base and letting it dry um, just really works out super well for this type of a technique because it's just adding that first initial layer and now you can just come in with your neo colors and just do some fun do some shading so that's what I'm going to play around with is coming in here and putting in the cast shadows and making her face look more round and dimensional and coloring it in. See even just that little bit, look at how that makes her face start come to life and pop. Like underneath her nose is going to be darker, so you're going to want to put a little darker under there. And coming down here into her lip is darker. So I'm going to just play and this is definitely darker because her face is all hidden in her hair and tipped away from the light. So this part is going to be dark except for her cheek bone where it's a little taller than the rest. So I'm going to play around. I'm going to add some colors. The only reason I'm not showing the whole coloring process is these videos now that everybody is home, sheltering at home. Um, internet services are super 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 slow um, <clears throat> for a 15 minute video it takes about nine hours to upload it so I'm trying to keep these videos as short as possible and not show you the whole entire process just give you some inspiration on something that you might want to try in your art journal just kind of show you what I'm doing to play in mine so after I get this part of her colored in then I'll come back and show you how I'm gonna work on the roses Okay, now I'm going to start working on her hair, and I'm just taking um, and putting a base color. I'm going to eventually have her hair be uh, kind of a reddish brown, kind of an auburn color. So what I like to do with my Caran d'Ache is to just pick up some and almost like watercolor paint, just apply it all in a base like this. Not heavy, not dark. It's just laying down a base of color, like a wash, a wash of color. Because then you can go back in and you can define it by adding like where this would be underneath a curl. It's going to be darker underneath here. So then you can go back and add in some heavier, darker. And then that's where you get your, your nice shading. 
So just go in here with your Caran d'Ache and do a wash. If you want it blonde, pick a yellow. And uh, if you want a brown, pick a brown. But you're just going to apply it lightly with a lot of, of water in your brush just to do a nice little wash. And then kind of let it dry a little bit. And then come back in and add in your strokes to make it look like um, hair strokes. Okay, so she's starting to come to life for me. Um, I like how the shadowing looks, and her hair is starting to take some shape. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna play and play and play with it, but I just wanted to show you. Same process with your roses. Whatever color you want your roses to be, whether you want them to be yellow roses or pink roses, whatever. Take a, take a little bit of your Neo Color Two and do a wash over that. Um, clear jello, gesso, it, it's perfect. I mean, it's like just enough grit and grab and just kind of make it varied. You know what I mean? Like dark in some places, light in others, like that. Let me move closer a little bit. Like that. And then you're just going to layer it. You're going to keep going. You're going to let that layer dry. You're going to add some more layers, some more colors. Use several different shades of a red or a pink or keep adding the same one over and over in some spots to make it darker and deeper. That's where you get your tones and your shades. So play around with it and if you're doing this, this is so fun to take a coloring book image and put it down in an art journal, if, especially if you don't like to draw. Like, I like to draw this kind of thing, but I had this left over from a previous project and I just wanted to use it up. But if you don't want to draw, if you don't like to draw faces, but you want a pretty girl in your journal, use a coloring book image. Put it down, put your um, clear gesso over it, let it dry, and then go to town. Paint it with watercolors, paint it with acrylics. Um, use your Caran d'Ache Neo 2 and color it in and shade it, practice your shading and just have a lot of fun with it. Then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to still layer over the top with pieces of um, uh, napkins that have roses and maybe some butterflies and things like that and I'm just going to keep adding to this. I think I'm going to put some blue in the background and then just do words and things over here for whatever I'm wanting to journal about. But I'm just going to play around a little bit more and as I add things I'll pop in and show you what I'm doing. And I'll tell you for me this kind of art journaling is something that I had to come and work on this and do this today to get my mind off of what's going on. I'm trying not to watch the news but then my um, my mom alerted me that my uh, uncle's friend has been admitted to the hospital um, with coronavirus and it's um, our governor today put a lockdown on Arizona so you're not allowed to leave your house unless it is um, for groceries there's specific guidelines of things that you can go out for but they're trying to get people to not continually go out because people are just not not doing what they're supposed to and it's just spreading and spreading and spreading across the US so now Arizona is officially on lockdown it's not just self quarantining it's mandatory um, and the numbers are climbing so it's really it's really scary it gives me a lot of anxiety I'm I'm very um, panicked about it the thought of going into the hospital and you know not only are you ill and you're wondering about you know your own mortality but the fact that your family members can't be there they can't visit you they can't be there to check in on you it's that part is scary to me too the if my parents had to go and I couldn't go be with them and hold their hand that would just be awful so ah, it gives me high anxiety high anxiety so I've got to got to create art so that I do something else so along this edge here I'm just taking a dry brush and some blue and I'm adding in some blue and then just kind of dry brushing it out making texture on the paper page just to add blue behind, uh, next to her that's just kind of where I'm starting with it and I'm, I'm going to layer it out and do some other funky things to it but a dry brush will give you this really nice texture especially with acrylic paint on paper you get a really nice grungy looking texture and then I'm just making it a little darker next to her. 
So it's darker next to her and then it's going to fade out a little bit. Just to give her a little contrast shadow behind her. So I like how this is coming out. Look at how different it looks from when it was an image that was mermaid to now it's just a lady and um, you could have it going this way where she's laying in the roses which I may do that. I may do my words this way so that this is like this on the page. I don't know. I like it like this too. I'm just going to play around with it. But now I'm going to add some napkins, napkin images. Look at all these neat flowers I have. I've got um, some pretty flowers and some roses and some butterfly images. And so I'm just going to Mod Podge some of them around it to um, add some color and bring out some brightness. This is just basic and it's just started, but there's no point in coloring all these if I'm going to cover them. So I'm going to do my covering and then go back and touch in color into those. And these little spots on her are petals, so I need to color those in, I noticed as well. So I'm going to just play and I'll just show you here and there what I'm doing and explain it, trying to keep it short. Okay, so this is what it looks like with adding some napkin images so far. I've got rope, big roses and rose petal leaves, and then I added some book text. Um, this was in uh, Chinese writing just to add some interest, and I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to come back in and do some more painting and coloring and playing on this page. Okay, I've trimmed off the uh, napkins that were hanging over the edge. I've gone in and I've darkened up some of these colors, and then now what I'm doing is I'm taking a uh, pan. This is a Statler pigment liner. I, I'm saving my uh, good Tombows for other things. Um, this is really rough and it has a lot of product on it, so I'm using one of my older pens to go in here and add some lines back in. So what I mean by that is, let me zoom in here, is I'm going back in here and I'm adding some hair strokes, going over some of the lines that are there, adding in some extra ones, and just sharpening it up so that some of the places where you've uh, colored over it pop a little bit. See how that looks? That's just my preference. And then I did that around her eyes and around her mouth, just sharpening it up a little bit and bringing back some of the, some of the lines that maybe have gone away from um, playing around and doing things on your page. And then um, making some extra hair strokes. I always love the look of that. It just really brings it to life. So adding some extra, like underneath this little ridge here, this little peak in her hair. See that? And then doing the same thing in the roses, just going around some of the edges of the roses. Very free-handed, but just to make them pop a little bit and stand out. Like that. Just adding in some pen work. And then what I'm going to do is like here on this, this is a napkin, and I'm going to go in and add some pen work here. Just adding in some more petals, making them more defined like that. And then I think my very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to splatter with some gold paint on here. I think that that would just be really, really pretty. And then over here on this page, I'm just going to um, probably in blue or something, do a little bit of a border, maybe with just a distress ink and do my journaling over here. So this turned out really pretty. It was a, a fun way to use up a coloring book image and bring it back to life and make it different than what it was. So changing it up. I love changing up things that I have and I like repurposing things on my art journals. So that is my tip for today and my play for today. I hope that you're all staying safe and staying healthy. Um, this is just super scary times. So anyway, thanks for thanks for playing along and I hope you enjoy this and it inspired you to do something new and different in your art journal. Art soothes the heart. See you next time.